I guess I got my 18436572 right. <laughs> Cruising the coast is a week away. It's the most epic cruise event in all the country, in my opinion. How can you argue with 8,000 cars all cruising 45 miles of coastline? It's awesome. So we're gonna take the Cutlass this year. It's a 1971 Cutlass Supreme convertible that I rebuilt from a basket case. It took me three years to do it in my garage. This is an awesome car. Today it wasn't so awesome. <laughs> Today I had to tune it up. I had a fuel problem, sorted it out, took apart the quadri jet, got it done, and it's purring now. So, if you're interested in seeing how we tuned it, tweaked it today, and got that carburetor taken apart and put back together, purring like a kitten, you keep on watching. Good morning. So this is the 1971 Cutlass that I rebuilt a few years ago. It's got a 350 rocket in it, and um, we're planning on taking Christine to cruise in the coast next year. Uh, but for now, this is our ride. So cruising the coast is a little more than a week from now, and I went to go tune it up, tweak it, get it, make sure, get it cleaned up, make sure it's all ready to go. And lo and behold, it won't uh, idle right. It's it's uh, sporadic. Sometimes it'll idle, sometimes it won't. And what it's doing is it uh, the motor will diesel and clatter and, and not take the gas, won't take the accelerator, and then you can rev it, and it'll rev really high, and it'll it'll res be responsive. But then as soon as the motor winds back down, uh, comes down close to idle, it starts spitting and sputtering, dieseling and clattering again. So let me show you what we got. So there it is. It's a 1972 Oldsmobile 350. It's a 1971 body. But what I need to do today is I'm going to take the carburetor down. I'm going to take the quadrajet off of it. Uh, see if I can't find what's wrong with it. I think it's a fuel circuit problem. And if it's not that, then it's something in a distributor. I have points in a distributor um, and a, uh, an MSD box that's hidden underneath the dash. So it's a, it's a CD ignition but I have points uh, that I'm using as a trigger. So sometimes oxidation will collect in the points and, and cause it to not, to not run right. So it's one, of, it's one of two things. It's either that carburetor or it's a distributor, one of the two. So I'm gonna take it off and take, start with by taking off the carburetor and let's see where it goes. So a lot of people are afraid of these quadrajets, um, quadra bog, quadra junk, quadra whatever you want to call it. Um, this is an original carburetor from 1972. It's a 71 Cutlass, but that's a 72 350. I got it out of another Rollsmobile. Um, but this carburetor, it's you know, 50 50 plus year old technology. You know, it's 50 year old technology here, and it has. But but it's it's a really this is a precision instrument, you know, quadrajets get a bad name. Uh, people prefer the Hollies, and the Hollies are much more simple. Yeah, you know, it, it, there's, there's not that much, um, it's not a very complex instrument, the Holly is. But as far as carburetors go, this Rochester was totally tunable, totally adjustable. You could vary so many different things in it. And the bit, one of the big things that's different about these is where the Holly has a jet that, um, it's just it's it's just straight up. You put a jet in it, a seventy-two thousandths jet in it, or a seventy thousandths jet, or a sixty-eight thousandths, and you put that jet in it, and that's what's going to regulate your full fuel. Whereas these Rochesters have um, metering rods, so there's a jet that's a lot bigger, and the metering rod is step tapered. So as you're at low RPM, more of the rod is obstructing the the orifice of the jet, and as you're you, you, you want to throttle, it picks up that 
metering rod and that metering rod goes into a smaller tapered area and now suddenly your jet is bigger. So when the fuel demand is higher, it's giving you more fuel. When you take this carburetor off of a motor, if you got it off of a 455 that was a smog motor and you put it onto something that's like a small block 350 and you're hot riding it, the fuel curve is going to be all jacked up. So of course you're going to have to deal with it. It's different from a Holly. Holly's just straight, you know, open to Venturi, change a jet. You don't get a whole lot of, of things to tune. This has, it's, it's, it's got almost an infinite number of combinations. So I've had, over time, play with the carburetor, and I've had to change the metering rods. I've had to change a number of different things on here to try to get the tune to the car. And it took a while to work out, but now it's, it's, it's working out really, really well. Except for now, which is, I've got this fuel problem at idle. So I'm going to look at it and see if I can't figure out what it is and try to clean it and, and hopefully discover what it is. But what I, sus what I suspect, and I, what I'm, thinking happened I don't know yet I haven't taken it apart but what I'm thinking happened is I'm thinking that the fuel as it evaporated evaporated and left a little bit a teeny tiny bit of varnish three weeks later I come back fill it up again go through the whole cycle a teeny tiny bit more varnish one two three four times without having it run and eventually this I think the varnish buildup in here maybe is accelerated I do run purely ethanol free fuel in the car but when you let it sit, there's going to be some solids in the fuel that's going to have to uh, create some sort of a residue. I don't know. We'll find out. So that's what I'm on. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know which. <laughs> uh, I don't see any buildup. Well, there's a little bit. There's a little bit of buildup in here. And that, man, I don't know if that's it. A little bit of, I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of gold on the fingertip. A little bit of, a little bitty, teeny tiny bit of residue down here. And it's like, man, I watch people do that. Hadn't run in 30 years and pull it out of the weeds and let's get this carburetor that. It has had dry seals for umpteen thousand months and oh vroom vroom and it runs and then I've got this thing which is pampered and it does this <laughs> so I don't know I'm gonna continue working on it continue cleaning on it and just see I'm gonna blow um, carb cleaner through all the orifices and all the ports and just make sure that there's nothing silly going on but that's that's about the best I can do I did tear the the gasket on the way out which is that's fun so i don't know if i've got another one but I'll, uh, if i don't have another one I'll, I'll make this one work some sort of way we'll find a way I'm not gonna let that stop me so here we go continuing so while i got the top of the carburetor off i'm gonna show you a few things so this quadrajet one of the things that's different about it from the holly is that this is actually an, an air door this on the secondary. So you have the primaries, it's a spread board, so there's two smaller primaries, there's two larger secondaries, and the secondaries have this air door. And there's a little gate on it that stops it from flapping open, and, and, and that's here. So once once this is tripped, and is, it allows the air door to have a vacuum pull it, it'll regulate as much air as it needs for the secondaries. So a lot of times you'll crack these, you'll floor these, and you won't see this thing react this way, and leave it alone. <laughs> Just let it do what it needs to do. Uh, you adjust the spring tension as a spring tensioner adjustment that's right here in this air door but you basically want this air door to do this other than that leave it alone and this other this um, safety latch that keeps it from opening when it's not ready to be opened leave that alone too all right so on the bottom side of it 
Here are the metering rods. So you got these are the secondary metering rods that drop into the these drop. This is what I was talking about, the step taper. These drop into the um, the jets on the on the secondary side. You've got air bleeds. You've got fuel enrichment circuits. So each one of these, each one of these things, I'm going to blow things through through all these. But a lot of these have to do with the secondary flow. Um, I want to say that these two have to do with the primary side. So that's there could be some issue in there. But these, I think the rest of these are all they all have to do with the secondaries. So let's continue. All right, while I was doing all that, I did have safety glasses on, and not only do I have safety glasses on, I have safety glasses with readers in them. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> My eyes aren't good like they used to be. So uh, you can get these if you didn't, if you weren't aware of those, you can get those for those older farts like me, you know, <laughs> you can get you can get safety glasses with readers built into them. And if you didn't know that trick, man, that's worth the whole time you watch this whole video. So, <laughs> no, what I wanted to point out to you is what I was doing. I was looking at, uh, I was looking up close, and um, there's several different circuits that are that are right here, and, and, and every one of them has got a little a little opening, a little port. So let me see if I can get the throttle, open the throttle, get the blades out of the way. But in this, and my flashlight. So if you can see the the light gray and the dark gray, the light gray is above the throttle plate, the dark gray is below the throttle plate. So crossing over the throttle plate is a slot. I don't know if you can see that slot. Hopefully you can. But there's a, a slot. Let's see if I can get it to where I can point to it. Right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, we cooking gas now. So there is a slot right here. This slot. And that's what I think was potentially clogged. It's got it on both sides. That slot, and that's a transfer slot. And so what I think is that that's partially exposed when the throttles, are, when the throttle blades are closed and it's at idle. That's part. That's partially closed, and so that's allowing air and fuel on both sides, or it's allowing fuel to enter into the air into the air venturi on both sides of that blade. So it's it's basically as the blade is opened up, more and more and more of that slot is open, and that's a primary transfer slot. So that slot, I think, might have been what was potentially clogged and you might have seen me digging around in it I've got some micro drill brick drill bits that I use to dig into that so I think that's what might have been the problem but I mean it was so tiny it was ridiculous uh, but I'm gonna continue on and we'll see but if it's not where I'm looking then the only other thing it can be is in the distributor so I'm gonna go look in there next after I finish with this carburetor I think I might have found my problem <laughs> I just got lucky um, I can't see him but put on my, my glasses so I can see but right here these are well this crappy video all right so remember I said you got metering rods well these are your primary metering rods all right so these two stick into the into the primary jets and they regulate uh, fuel flow into the primary side these are your secondary metering rods they're much bigger your idle circuits are only affected by the primary metering rods. Metering rods. So check this out. Let's see if we can get it. I think I don't know if it'll focus on that, but this metering rod's bent on its tip. Let me see if you can get it. Can you get it? Can you get it? Can you see it? Can you see it? I can see it. Anyway, it's bent. So I'm going to straighten that out, and it might have been all my problem because that's on the on the idle circuit and maybe that explains it when I'd rev it 
unrev it, and then maybe that would pick up these these the metering rods, and maybe the metering rods it would bent, and that one metering rod was hanging up, hanging up, hanging up until it finally dropped. I bet that's my problem. So this has probably been causing me some heartache for a while. Can't wait to have it fixed. It's awesome. <laughs> Let's get it. So now that I've got it assembled, I'll show you what it looks like. They call this center part a power piston, and these are two primary metering rods. And I've straightened it out. I don't remember which one was bent, but I straightened them out. And these two, it it rests right inside of where the right in between where the float, um, the float and the needle are. And you can see they drop right down into the jets. So the two jets are down in the bottom, and these sit right inside of those little holes and apparently sometime in the past me assembling this carburetor or something must have bent one of these two metering rods and that has probably been causing me all kinds of trouble and i'm so looking forward to it not so i'm gonna it takes two hands to do this so i'm gonna do that but anyway you can kind of see what i'm talking about is the okay so the the, the jet see how that needle needle sits in the jet the jet is uh that's a 70 thousandths jet and this um, metering rod, which is tapered, sits in that jet. And as you give it more gas or you give it more throttle and it, it, the, uh, the power piston picks up, it picks up those metering rods. And those metering rods allow the jet to go from being restricted to unrestricted. And that allows more fuel. So it's like that on the primary side. It's also like that on the secondary side. And those go, those go back here after you get the, uh, the top together. I'll, I'll put those in. So keep it on. All right, so one more thing. Remember I said the gasket, I tore the gasket, it tore in two, pot, two spots. Well, this gasket is on the upper plate. It's on the upper plate, and look where the two tears are. The tear is next to the secondary Venturi and the secondary Venturi. So it's just below the air, uh, the air gates. It's just below the air gates, so it, it's right there where that little black mark is and on the other side similarly so that's not going to be a vacuum leak that's not going to be a fuel leak so i'm not at all afraid of putting this gasket back on and what i'm going to use to repair it i have some permatex forma gasket um sealant liquid it's labeled aviation this used to be used for outboard motors and i have this because I, um, i've rebuilt a 1958 johnson outboard a uh, pretty cool little project and this is one of the uh, products that they use on those little two strokes. So I thought about it and said, huh, it's almost like a glue. That's what I'm using. So that's how I'm gonna fix this gas. Okay, ta-da, there it is. Might have missed the last few minutes of this. I think the, the camera wigged out. But there it is, ready to put back in the car. We'll see if it works. So that's the next step. Here we go. If you like the videos, give me a thumbs up. And if you like the channel, I appreciate a subscription. So do appreciate you watching, taking the time, investing your time in, in what I'm doing here. Appreciate you watching the channel. So I'm going to try to bring you good content. So please stay tuned. Definitely subscribe if you want to keep informed. I do appreciate it. Thank you. You know, while I do have this and that's so easy to get to that distributor, I think I'm definitely going to go ahead and, uh, and take a look at those points. So I'll do that as well as put the carburetor on. So,
Well, I think that's it. Got my fuel line tight, got my exhaust gas for circulation line clamped up. I got a vacuum hose that goes down here. That's back on. The hot air recirculation for the hot air choke is, is all hooked up. Uh, I got the distributor. Double check the firing order, 18436572. If ever I got a tattoo, that's what I would have. Um, I think that's it. It's always a moment of truth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get some fuel, or put a little fuel in a in the carburetor float um, float bowl, and then try it and see what happens. truth. Is she going to start? That sounds good. Try it again. fuel leak I gotta fix right here. You can see it dripping. Now you see yesterday I do that and it would come down and start dieseling and stumbling and clattering. See right now a little bit of a rough idle. That's that's just because it's cold. So I'm gonna shut it down, fix that fuel leak. It's always a fuel leak right there. Always, always, always I'm gonna fight that. Anyway, so I think we're good. I guess I got my 18436572 right. <laughs> so I fixed the leak and um, I noticed as I was fooling around back here, I noticed the distributor was loose, which is odd. Um, I don't know how it wiggled its way free, but I'm not gonna trust the timing. I can see that it's, it's probably a little retarded or so. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got a timing light. I'm going to put the timing light on it. And also I have um, a 36 degree mark on my flat on my harmonic balancer. So I look for 36 degrees all in and I time for all in. And then I know that when I have the startup, it's got the uh, startup timing is, is, is going to be right. So I really want the all in to be right, which is at 36 degrees before top dead center on this car um, or on this motor, I should say. So I'm going to set everything up and see if my timing mark, if I can still see it, because it's been over a year since it's been there down there, so it's probably grimy. Let's see. good now. She wasn't learning good a few hours ago. Took the day taking that quadrajet apart and got it got it sorted out, got it got it tuned and tweaked. And now the cutlass is running good. So she's ready for cruising the coast. I can't wait. So I'm gonna do a little bit more. Probably tomorrow I'll go out for a drive, go out for a shakedown cruise. We'll take it around town and drop the top if the weather's nice and um, we'll be on our way. Well, there you have it, we're ready for cruising the coast. So, 
you like the channel, please subscribe. If you like the videos, give me a thumbs up. Appreciate all of you watching. Take care. Cheers.